Hi guys, my name is Christine and today I'm talking about the secret to stopping fear and anxiety that actually works. So there's a question that I want to ask to you whenever you are in one of these experiences where you have high anxiety or a lot of fear or worry about what's about to happen, right? It could be something like starting a new job or perhaps you just feel fearful around your job in general. It could be starting something new. Whatever it is for you, there's a, there's a question that I would like you to ask yourself. What am I going to do? Right? What am I going to do? And how would I ultimately like it to go, right? So if you ask yourself those two things, you know, what am I going to do? You know, what am I focusing on doing? And how would I ideally like it to go, right? So when you focus on those questions, you then get more of a, you become then more goal orientated rather than fear orientated. And that's one of the, the greatest things that you can actually do. If you just focus on what you're going to do and, you know, what you ultimately would like to happen, right? So the goal could be, okay, I just want to get through today. I just want to, you know, have, have, a, have a pleasant day. I just want to have a pleasant time at work, or whatever it may be for you, right? Um, what am I going to do? Well, you might be thinking about what the actions that you actually need to take when you're at work or that thing that, you, that, is right, that you're feeling fearful, fearful about, right? So it's a good idea to focus on what you can do because ultimately you can't really focus too much on what might happen right because a lot of the anxiety that sometimes we feel about doing certain things is the unknown not knowing what's going to happen not knowing what people are going to say not knowing what issues are going to show up or you might be fearing the worst in like hypothetical situations in your mind you see right so it's better to focus on what you can personally do and you know a positive goal of how you would ultimately like the day to go how ultimately you would like that certain circumstance to go right and just focus on those things as opposed to focusing on how you fearful you're feeling right because that's not going to help you right it really isn't going to help you it's going to hinder you it's not going to make you feel good right so there are some other things as well that can help as well as well and sometimes the, when it comes to fear and feeling fearful there the, what you've got to realize is that sometimes there is always going to be a little bit of fear there's always going to be a little bit of nerves you're always going to be anxious right in certain circumstances in your life right there's there's always going to be that there right so the idea then is not to try to eliminate that because you're going to have some sort of jitters no matter what right um, and understanding that sometimes is curative in itself, just the awareness of, you know, there are going to be circ there's going to be circumstances in my life where I'm going to get the jitters, where I'm going to feel nervous. And that's just basically how life is. There, there are just certain, cer cer certain circumstances that happen to us where we just have that, right? And they're, they're just going to happen, right? So the idea then is, is to do what Susan Jeffers says in her famous book, you know, you feel the fear, but you do it anyway, because hiding from it and avoiding it, right, is not going to help you. It's not going to make you become stronger, right? The best thing for you is to actually go through it, right? To not avoid it, to go through it, okay? And that will probably show you, actually, that it wasn't as bad, right? It wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. And I've had loads of experiences where I've made something out to be really big in my mind, it's gonna be really worrying, and I'm thinking about all the different things that could happen, and then I do it, and I actually go through it, and I'm like, oh, that wasn't actually nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, it's not always the case, sometimes things can go worse than we think it's gonna happen, but usually, most of the time, it's usually not as bad as we've made it out to be in our own heads, okay, right? So, another thing that can help as well is the, the knowledge that, it's not going to last forever, right? The, the, the anxiety provoking event is not going to last forever. And what is a good reminder is like, no matter what, you can say to yourself, no matter what, tonight, I'm going to be home, I'm going to be in my bed, you know, I've got to get through this. But in the end of the day, I'm going to be back where I started, I'm going to be at home, and I'm going to be back in my bed, and I'm going to be safe, right? And sometimes that can really help as well, just the knowledge that these things don't last forever, right? You, you know, the, 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 whether it's like a test, or going to work or something like that, there is an end to it, right? There is an end, right? So that can often help as well. 
Okay, um, another thing that can often help too is that other people experience the same things. Okay, you're not alone in your fear, in your anxiety. There may be people out there that are even more fearful than what you are, right? So whenever you're starting something new or whenever you're going into a high stress environment, usually everyone else is feeling that exa those exact same feelings too. Okay, so you're not alone. It's not unique to you. It's not, you're not weird for having fears and jitters and anxiety. We all have them, right? We all have it. And actually, they, they're there to serve a purpose. So there's nothing wrong with you for having that, those anxieties, right? Because basically the fear and the anxiety comes from our survival mechanism, right? We are trying to survive, right? And when we are feeling fearful, it's okay to feel that because obviously it means that our body is working in the way that it should. Now, obviously, sometimes it can be too much though, right? This is where you get like people who have like crippling anxiety and crippling fear, right? And um, it stops them from actually doing their day-to-day -day activities. And that's when I suggest if it's stopping you from doing your day-to-day -day activities and you're hiding away from things and you're avoiding life, becoming an agoraphobic or whatever it may be, that's when you need to seek help, right? And if you feel like things are heading that way or you may already be there already and you're in that kind of state, then you definitely need to get some medical help. I'm not a medical professional and these tips may not actually help you if you have severe anxiety to the point where it's actually a disease and a medical condition. So I highly recommend that you go and speak to a medical professional, right, because I'm not one, um, although these tips may help, but don't substitute my tips for actual medical professional help, right, go and talk to a psychotherapist about it, um, or just a therapist, a counsellor, go and speak to your GP, your doctor, so they can help you through this, okay, okay, um, so knowing that you're not alone, knowing that other people also experience fear, jitters, can often help, now what you've got to understand is that as well, sometimes you may be looking around at other people, and it may not seem that they're nervous, it may not seem like they're fearful, Right, but often other people may be looking at you and thinking the exact same thing because obviously fear is something that's internal. Now, unless you're actually physically shaking, there's no way for other people to realize that you're actually that nervous most of the time, okay? So just knowing that as well, knowing that most people feel fear, feel anxiety when they're doing something new or something they haven't done before, when um, they're going through a certain experience that makes them nervous, it, knowing other people could feel that too is often very curative, okay? So the last point that I wanna make is that with all this being said, nothing really though is worse than the feeling of helplessness that comes along with the anxiety, right? Because if you allow the anxiety to take over you, if you allow the fear to take over you, right? and you let it win essentially by not doing the thing that you need to do by procrastinating by hiding from your responsibilities by hiding away and you know not facing any kind of fear that bring you know that anything that brings you any kind of fear or any anxiety puts you in a very helpless state right and nothing to for me nothing is worse than feeling helpless right and not being able to take in your own personal power basically and take action which is why I encourage you if you're afraid of doing something right to to go out and do it and go through it because then at least you will know that it's actually not as bad as you thought it was going to be or maybe it is as bad as you thought it was going to be but you handled it you survived right and that's one of the best things that you can like, like a mantra that you should adopt right a mantra you should adopt is no matter what happens to me I can handle it because one of the things that fear and anxiety does is it makes you think that you can't handle what you're about to face. But I can guarantee it that you can handle it, you can face it. So that's a good mantra for you to use. When Whatever is going to happen, whatever today brings, I know I can handle it, right? Because more than likely you can. And if you can't handle it for whatever reason, I'm sure there is someone that can help you. Right, someone who you can talk to, someone who may also be in that same environment with you that can help you, someone you can ask for help. Right, there is even if you cannot handle it, there is usually always help at hand. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.